Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Just got all my school emails for the week. Um, so, before we get started, obviously you can tell I tried to shave because I was starting to look like a Jesus imitator, and that wasn't my goal. Um, I, As you know, I'm probably in, not probably, I will be in Pennsylvania right now, uh, enjoying Thanksgiving with my fiance's family. Uh, but I still wanted to get videos up um, one, one a day, trying to stay on track. So I'm actually recording this Sunday night. Um, but before we get into the reading, uh, let me know what you guys like to eat for Thanksgiving. Uh, I am personally the turkey, mashed potatoes, and gravy. And I'm starting to come around on stuffing, but not quite there yet to say it's something that I'll eat regularly. And then for dessert, which you can't have Thanksgiving without dessert, I'm a big pumpkin pie person. Um, cold, I like my desserts cold, but, um, I, I can eat it with whipped cream, but I kind of prefer it without if it's good pumpkin pie. Um, but yeah, so just let me know what you guys are eating. I hope that everybody's having a very nice, relaxing time off, whether it's from school or work or yeah, just, just a break in general. But having said that, we're going to get into the reading for today. It's Genesis chapter 15. The Lord's Covenant with Abram. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless, and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if you indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to take possession of it. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, how can I know that I will gain possession of it? So the Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer, a goat, and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abram brought all these to him, cut them in two, and arranged the halves opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. Then birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Adam drove them away. Or Abram, not Adam. <laughs> As the sun was setting, Abram fell into a deep sleep, and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that for four hundred years your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and that they will be enslaved and mistreated there. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterward they will come out with great possessions. You, however, will go to your ancestors in peace and be buried at a good old age. In the fourth generation your descendants will come back here, for the sin of the Amorites has not yet reached its full measure. When the sun had set and darkness had fallen, a smoking fire pot with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces. On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram and said, To your descendants I give this land from the Wadi of Egypt to the great river the Euphrates. The land of the Kenites, Kenizzites, Cadmonites, Hittites, Perizzites, Rephites, Amorites, Canaanites, Girgashites, and Jebusites. So Abram is at first worried that he's not going to be able to pass on um, his estate to any son any sons because he hasn't had any children. Uh, but then uh, God, you know, reassures him that he will have children that number the stars in the sky, and. Um, so it's interesting because Abram believed him. He took him at his word for that one because it just says, so shall the offspring be. And then Abram believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. So he believes him without any question. But then when the Lord says that he brought him out of Ur to give this land to take possession of it, Abram questions it and he's like, so how can I know that I will gain possession of it? And it's like, you just trusted him that he was going to give you literally as many children as there are stars in the sky which to me would seem i think a little bit more outlandish than just giving a piece of land or area to somebody but this is the one that he questions and then so this is when the god um the god i'm too tired this is when god tells him to to bring him a heifer a goat a ram each three years old and this is a very specific interesting request to show that you know, you're, you're trusting of somebody, um, along with a dove and a young pigeon. So, you know, you have an interesting variety of animals. 
he cut them in two in a range that has opposite each other. I don't know if that's symbolic in some way. I'm not knowledgeable enough to say for sure. Um, then he falls into a deep sleep. Uh, thick and dreadful darkness came over him. And then the Lord said to him that, you know, for 400 years your descendants will be strangers, slaves in a country that is not their own, which I believe is referencing um, the story of Moses freeing the slaves. I could be wrong about that too. We'll get there eventually. Um, but he does tell Abram that before that happens, he will be uh, dead. He'll, he will uh, join his ancestors in peace and be buried at a good old age. Uh, and then he says that your ancestors will come back here uh, for the sin of the Amorites has not yet reached its full measure. And then we have uh, the list of the names at the very end. Um, but yeah, so I th think I covered everything. I apologize if I go back over after reading. I don't want it to get repetitive, but I want to be able to comprehend and make a picture of what's happening in most of these because sometimes I just read them and I don't understand what I'm reading. I'm just focused on reading it as, as well as I can. The sin of the Amorites. What did, can somebody let me know what that was? Because I'm forgetting. I'm very forgetful. I could probably forget, you know, what I did tonight, tomorrow morning, if I tried. So I'm not sure what the sin of the Amorites was. I can't remember, but um, it says that it has not yet reached its full measure. So maybe it hasn't come to pass yet. Anyway, we'll we'll find out. Um, we'll keep reading. And everybody, if you're going shopping tonight, tomorrow morning, just be safe. Um, get some good deals. Let me know if there are any good deals, although I'll be in Pennsylvania. If there are any online good deals, send me a message. Text me if you have my number. All right, other than that, I will see you guys again tomorrow.